Hey, what's up guys? Zach with Wired Customs, and today I'm going to show you how to assemble a Ford Banjo rear axle. To be completely honest, I was going to show you how to completely rebuild this, um, but my footage of before of taking it apart all got deleted on my GoPro. They do these weird errors where it says SD card error and it just deletes everything that you have recorded on there. So I had like 10 hours of different footage uh, on that that got completely wasted. So that sucks. We still have a lot to learn on this axle. Putting back this back together is the most difficult part. Um, shimming the the two halves just right to get the perfect lash um, that's where it's pretty time consuming so that'd be a great learning experience right there um, a couple things to be noted uh, of what I did uh, during this process that you should also do is um, before I took the whole thing apart I had a stake punch and I marked left side right side and on the center housing uh, I marked it that way so I did um, I believe Yep, so on the driver's side, I put one uh, center punch, one center punch on the center, two center punch, two center punch on this side so they can stay clocked and they can stay side to side specific uh, so we don't get all that messed up. And also when I took it apart, I also marked um, the spider gears. So I marked both sides of the housing and the spider gear housing so I can keep those lined up after cleaning it and reassembling it. Then I'll also mark the center section inside of um, the housing of the differential. So all three pieces, when they mate back together, they're mating back together where they've always been for, what is it, like 74 years, something like that. That's a long time. So we wanna make sure all that stuff stays together in the same position, just in case they've worn any kind of weird way um, but there was nothing, no signs of anything looking bad on the inside. Everything looked great. All I did was tear it all the way down, clean it really, really well. So now we're going to put on new bearings. Uh, I'm pressing them on out of the box. Nothing's heated up. Nothing's warmed up. Everything is in good shape. No burrs on anything. They push on just fine. Both axles got brand new bearings. The pinion got a brand new bearing. Now we don't just push on the bearing, we also push on the second bearing and completely enclose the two bearings and the housing right there. Outside from that, let's get to the footage that didn't get deleted. All right, so now we're at the point where I got everything completely disassembled. I had everything really, really clean. I pressed my new bearing and races on. Um, I got all my parts from the early Ford store. So early Ford store in California, I'll throw the, the website down below to make sure you go to the correct one. Um, but they have uh, the best kit in my mind. They have a good combination of old parts and new parts. Um, so I really, really trust their quality with my rear ends and my transmissions. I packed my bearings with uh, Temkin. This is a pretty uh, common grease. Uh, it's a red grease. I like red grease. I hate using like brown grease. It just looks dirty at the get-go. So um, everything's been packed before I pressed it on. Now it's time to actually start assembling things. This is where you actually want to um, over grease everything. So over grease is good for me since this is a customer's, I'd be giving it back to them dry. So I want everything to have grease on it, all the gears, everything. Um, he can roll it in and out of the shop dry, perfectly fine for a while, uh, load it in and out of his truck and not have <laughs> axle grease uh, spill out the wheel bearings and stuff like that. So don't be afraid to get messy and get grease all over everything, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is slide the axle through our ring here. Um, I haven't had the ring assembled yet, so that's part of this process now. And since I'm about to do it right here, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just add my extra amount of lube down inside the ring. 
and where the axle is about to sit right now. So there. So I'm going to slide this down in. And I have a bunch of grease here too, so I'm going to re-hit that one more time. Because this area is really important. It's where everything rides together at right here. So this is all mating surfaces. Okay, nice and greased up. And here's where we cheat. And we're gonna assemble this on the side of the cart here. Now it's time to start assembling my housings here. So I wanna make sure there's quite a bit of grease in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-grease this section here. Now I did it assembling this. Now I'm just gonna do just a little bit extra before the final assembly. Now if you look at the old textbooks for these, which I collect, um, they use a big old brush and they just brush this, this stuff on. So um, don't be afraid to overdo it because if you're reading the original textbooks, uh, they were very, very uh, messy at putting this on. Now when I set this on, I'm going to line up the bolt holes and I'm also going to line up the gears at the same time. So set this on here. Bolt holes around there. That kind of fell down on us, which is good. Okay, just had to squish through the grease a little bit. There's that section. Okay, then our top housing, this is still dry from when I cleaned everything up. So let's go ahead and move this up too. Don't be afraid to be very extra with it. Now, whenever you see these little ovals like this inside these early Fords, that's a greaser. It's gonna allow it to grease itself and it's gonna wipe the extra grease off. So get a lot of grease down in that little oval there. But let's not forget that we marked these housings so they would stay exactly the same. Now I have my little impression there that I made and I just need to find the impression on here to make sure I line them back up together again. There it is right there. All right, now that we have the spider gears well lubricated, it's time to assemble our differential case. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the case onto this axle. Slide it all the way down, we already have it pre-lubricated. Then this is all gonna sit right on top of each other just like this. There's my marking from earlier. And I'm gonna mark that up with my marking that's facing me over here on this side. So basically this just went back together exactly the way it came apart except for new ring gear. Now make sure you use the original style of bolts because uh, we need the castle nut on these. We're actually gonna wire this back together the way it should have been from factory. Now these could use a little love tap. Just make sure everything is lined up first. Smallest hammer you got just to tap it down. All right, so I went over and tipped my axle over in the handle. Uh, that's why I like this roll around so well. And now I can put my bolts on to actually bolt together the differential. Now, if you're wanting to look for a torque spec on these, there really isn't one. The torque spec, what I'd consider is a 3 8 ratchet with a normal handle snug. Okay, don't bear down on it snug because we're really looking to get it tight, but also be able to get that wire through uh, the castle nuts. Now I'm gonna tighten this down like I'm tightening a, a wheel on an axle. So I'm gonna skip to this side, then skip back and forth and work my way around. Uh, we just want this differential to seat flush. And even though it's just hanging off my bench like this, we can still get it to seat flush. Now that we have it all snugged down by hand, each axle should be able to uh, rotate independently from oneself. So, Yep, so that roll tapes by itself. And now that we've taken this apart, you can understand in the spider gears how that's possible, that you could lift a vehicle up in the air with a banjo rear axle, spin just one, the other tire does nothing. It doesn't go backwards. It doesn't do anything at all. Um, that's why it's just two axles suspended on spider gears in the middle of a pinion ring. Okay, so now let's get some uh, lacing wire and lace this up so this can be nice and secure. 
So I'm going to use 17 gauge uh, galvanized lacing wire and the old school method was to tie one um, lacing wire off on the end, run it all the way around, tie it off again. The new school method that I like to use is we loop it in the back, we lace the wire on itself, go through the next bolt, lace it on itself, go through the next bolt. And what I'm going to do instead of going all the way around because that's more difficult, I like to do four, break it, tie it off, do four and uh, tie it off on that side too. So. Let's knock this out as fast as possible here. So we just need to double up our edge and make sure we have enough lace. So that's probably good. And these are my lacing pliers. You don't need to have lacing pliers, but it makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna take one end of this fold, do my bottom most nut here and come back towards myself. One end is going to loop around that castle nut and we are going to lace this part of the wire tight until it gets to the next bolt, go through tight to the next bolt and so on. So I'm going to grab it just behind that bolt and start lacing it. What I like about lacing pliers is they lock in. I can just grab the rod and it's going to spin itself. And 65% of the time, it works every time. There we go. I just want a snug lace. This isn't like brake calipers on a race car, but this is gonna, this is gonna do a good job. Okay, that's snug enough for this type of application. And just get it through the next bolt hole here and do it all over again. That's what it looks like when it started. And here in a second, I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. All right, so here it is all laced up. Um, instead of stopping and starting, I had such a long piece, I just said screw it and just kept going with it. But this is what's gonna make the rear end safe. Um, this is what's gonna make the differential safe. This thing is never coming apart. I have taken these apart uh, with the original lacing in it, 80 something years old, just fine, so. Hopefully this will last just as long. All right, so now it's time to insert our new pinion with our new bearing into the old housing here. Um, I have as clean as I could possibly get it. Um, and I also have it all pre-lubricated right here inside the housing. So when I go to press this in, hopefully it all goes in uh, nice and smoothly. So let's see how that works out. All right, so please excuse my messy bench back here. One set of headers destroyed the place. So here. Um, what we're going to do now is heat up this axle really, really well all the way around. We're about to hammer this in. So we're going to take our pressed together um, pinion and all the bearings here. It's all pressed together. We're going to heat this up. We're going to slide this down in here and just tap it with a hammer. Uh, I got a rubber mallet. That's going to get us all the way down into flush. Should be pretty simple. Now we're not torching this red hot. We're just getting it really, really warm. Probably just past the stage where you can touch it, but you just a little too warm to touch. Slight expansion. If you've never used a torch before, welcome to working on early cords. go. That should be hot enough. Look that it's halfway in already. Something stuck to my hammer. It should have nice and good play in there. And it shouldn't be so hot it's boiling the grease out. So it's hot 
I'm not going to touch it, but it's not hot enough to boil anything off of it. That's right where we want it to be. I don't feel any play back and forth, in and out, but everything moves freely. That worked out perfect. So something you need to keep in mind on these early forwards is that it's different from late forwards. So preload from this direction is not as important as preload from side to side. We'll get that by putting different shims on the outside of the axle tubes. So on this, we're going to keep assembling it. We're going to go ahead and throw our washer on. Then our first nut, we're going to go ahead and throw that on. Now this nut is supposed to be on 15 foot-pounds. So here we are with my contraption that I'm going to use to torque this up. My uh, half-inch torque wrench, I have a combination to go down 3 eighths. Then this wrench that you have to buy um, from Max Fabrications anyway to get this apart. Um, yes, this isn't the nice way to do it, but in the book they have something even weirder than this going on. So. This isn't also terrible. So we're gonna get this torque down. It's only 15 foot-pounds. Right now I have it set at 20 just because all the extras I have on it. But this should get us there nice and easy. See, it's breaking at 20 now. And I would hope that's probably around 15, if not just a tad bit more. And the book it says it should not slow the opinion down at all. So that feels just about the same, so it's good to go. We just need to get the locking washer put back on and the jam nut on. Washer, all we're going to do is get this in the threads, then try to hammer that edge down so we can have it lock it. It'll, it won't spin on the pinion because now this washer is in the groove and all these teeth are going to be folded over locking it from not spinning on the pinion. Here's our locking nut. Making this whole process super safe. It's torqued, lock washer, and locking nut. Now I'm going to tighten this down independently from the front one so we don't snug the front one down anymore. Center section is complete. Now we are just about done with this whole assembly. Now the next step for the center section is very simple. Just putting this back on, make sure you have the seal already hammered in place. Make sure you actually um, have the seal already greased up on the inside. Now, one thing to remember, there is a oil drain at the bottom of the pinion right here on the outside. Um, make sure that drain is not covered with our new conversion or with your original setup. Don't cover up that drain. What I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of black RTV on both sides. And I'm going to put the gasket on and bolt it down. Now we got that nice and snug. All we got left is our yoke and the little pins that's going to retain it. All right, so here's the hard part about assembling the banjo or axle. We are about to set backlash. We set backlash with different size gaskets. I have like 16 different gaskets here from smallest to biggest, and we're gonna stack those to get our preload. Now on the passenger side, we can bolt that up with the smallest gasket. That's basically where you start because all the preload is basically coming from the driver's side. We're going to be inserting the differential part actually through this side and this gasket on this side is going to bring this axle's race in and out. Okay, That in and out of the race is going to set the preload or the backlash on the pinion. So this is where we need to slow down. Don't put any RTV on anything because nothing is official. So I am going to put the smallest gasket that I have on the passenger side and I'm going to bolt this on with like three bolts and we are slowly going to get our preload and our lash correct. So good thing I set my marks. I have two notches here that I hit before we took it apart. 
then I have my two notches here that correspond with that. So as I'm putting this together, I'm putting it together over and over again the way it's actually going to be assembled. And we're not doing this officially yet, so I'm not going to grease anything up um, like I'm assembling it. Just want to get everything in there so we can get this adjusted. That's good. Now you can see with the bearings taken out of here how this gasket set is going to pull this race in and out from itself. Now the backlash of the pinion should be 0 .003 to 0 .008. Um, that's going to give us just a tiny little tad bit of play that you can feel by hand. Usually it takes the two smallest gaskets that are left in the kit. So I'm gonna go from there and see how it, how it feels from there. All right, just double checking that everything's tight. Now if there's not enough gasket thickness, it's going to be pushing those two races too hard together and it's going to be really hard to spit like how it is right now. Very hard to spit. So we need more gasket thickness on this. So I'm going to take this side off, add gaskets and see if they'll loosen it up. Alright, so now that we've finally got it where it feels like a normal axle, the lash is correct. Uh, that took about five times going on and off with the uh, driver's side axle. The passenger side uh, only had to come off once just to make it a little bit uh, thicker. Now side to side we have very small play, but a little bit of play is better than no play. We don't want to have no play. And now when we go side to side here, the play is very, very small. Well, we want to be in that gap of very small, but we don't want to have none. And then obviously we don't want to have a whole bunch because a bunch of power with a good slosh is, is uh, how we break stuff. So that feels great. It's time to silicone the axle up. So I'm going to take this one off and put RTV on here, black RTV. Then when I take this one off, I'm going to drill me a hole for a bung. This bung is actually going to allow the, the rear axle to ventilate pressure uh, at higher speeds. Um, <clears throat> the only downfall to these were they had no vent on this whatsoever anywhere. So when you modify these to drive faster than what they were intended, um, they'll blow out the seals just because there's too much internal pressure. Simple fix. Sweet. So that's basically it. Um, these are really simple. Just that little shim at the end can get a little complicated. Um, if I didn't explain that very well, just let me know. Put it down in the comments and I'll, maybe I'll find a better way to explain it. I will be using lock washers, uh, unlike the original setup where it didn't have any lock washers. So that's going to be a nice upgrade. And once you get a silicone back together, there's nothing left to do on this, but drive it. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos, leaving nice comments. It means a lot to me. But in the meantime, get off of YouTube and get your shift together.